Welcome back to Zone for Geeks. My name is Casey and in this video we are going to be installing Zabbix. Zabbix is a network monitoring tool which has several things going for it. First, it's free. It's also a lot more customizable than some of the other network monitoring tools. I've been using it a while and I prefer this over some of the free and paid network tools. Now Zabbix has a very good installation guide with all of the commands that you will need and a link to that guide is in the description. One issue with the Zabbix guide is that it asks you to set up the database, but never walks you through doing that. If you're following the instructions on Zabbix's website, but you're having a problem at that stage, then stay tuned and we'll get your database up to date for you. Now until we get to the database portion of this installation, I'm just going to copy all of the commands from the Zabbix website. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get the Zabbix repository. Now that we have that done, we're going to go ahead and install the server, the front end, and the agent. There are several packages that are about to be installed, so this can take several minutes depending on the speed of your system. Now we're ready to set up the database portion of our Zabbix server. So we need to install the MySQL database, and we can do that using sudo apt mysql-server. Uh, that's actually sudo at my install mysql server. Now that we've got our SQL server installed, we need to go ahead and update the password for our root user. Now I'm just going to copy and paste these commands as I've written them out earlier so I don't make any mistakes and I'll have these commands listed in the description below. Make sure you change your password to something that is not password123. Okay, now that we're done with that, let's go ahead and do a little cleanup. This is going to be the password that we just created. And we do not want to do any validation right now because we've already manually set our password. We're not going to change our password either. And then we are going to remove anonymous users, root login, and test database. Okay, and now we are all done. We can move back to the Zabbix guide on installation. So we're gonna go back into our SQL database. And then once again, we're just going to copy and paste the information that they have listed. Once again, don't make your password password. Now we're almost done. We just got a few more commands to go. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to install the schema. Uh, this is going to be the password that we just set up. And while this may look like it's not doing anything, it is running in the background and it can take a couple of minutes. Okay, we've got to make one last change to our database and then we're done with that. We're just going to copy over this last command. And then we're done. Okay, so now we need to go ahead and 
uh, set up our Zabbix server com file that's going to have our password to our database. So we're going to uh, open up our text editor. In this case, I'm going to use nano, and it's going to be an Etsy slash Zabbix slash Zabbix underscore server. And we're going to scroll down until we find our database. There's the name and user and password. So we're going to uncomment this. And in my case, the password was just password. Hit Control X, yes, and enter. Okay, we are now done. We can go ahead and restart our Zabbix, Zabbix server and Apache. And then we're going to set them to automatically start on uh, boot. So let's do that. And now if we've done everything correctly, we should be able to get to our Zabbix server. So I'm going to drag my browser over. We're going to hit the IP address is going to be 10.1.1.4 and then 4 slash Zabbix. And you should be met with this screen. Hit next. You'll see here that all of the checks are okay. Hit next. Uh, we are going to change our password. In my case, it is just password. And hit next. And then give it a server name. So we'll just do that. And next up. And we have successfully installed our Zabbix server. Now the default username is going to be admin. That is with a capital A. This is case sensitive. And the password is going to be Zabbix all lowercase. Hit sign in. And there you go, we're done. Now, one other change that I'm going to make that isn't on the guide is if I were to just go to this IP address, 10.1.1.4, it is actually going to pull up the default Apache web page. And I don't want to do that. I want to just go ahead and have it bring up Zabbix without me having to do the forward slash Zabbix. So it's, uh, let's actually just go back into my Zabbix server. And we're going to edit that. So let's see if I can remember the path to this off the top of my head. Uh, I believe it's slash var slash www slash html. And it is. So if we do an ls, we'll see that's our index page for our default Apache. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And I'm going to create a new one. PHP was installed when we uh, installed our Zabbix server. So let's do PHP. And then uh, the, let me think of the commands. I'm trying to do this off the top of my head. So I believe it is header location. And then we're going to do Zabbix close. And if I did this right, then we should be able to go directly to our IP address and go to Zabbix with exactly what happened. So once again, 10.1.1.4, and it takes us directly to our Zabbix installation. Now in my next video, I am going to show you guys how to set up a uh, monitor so we can actually monitor something. In this case, we're going to monitor my firewall, and I'm going to show you how to monitor the status of a website. So if you want to know if your website is showing a 404 error or some kind of server issue, then it'll actually alert us to that fact. Um, that video will go up. It'll probably get recorded tonight, but not go up until tomorrow. So you should have it by the time you watch this video. If you like this video go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe leave me a comment below if you have any questions or feedback whether it's good or bad i'm always welcome to honest feedback and i'll catch you on the next one